Hello everyone. Let's continue our sessions in dentine. So this third part will be covering uh, more about physical and chemical uh, properties and organic and inorganic content of dentine and the innovation various theories of innovation and the functional changes that is age and functional changes which are uh, dead tracks, uh, sclerotic or transparent dentine and affected and infected dentine. So let's see the details of these theories, innovation and functional changes. Dentine is light yellowish in color and it becomes darker with age which is harder than bone but considerably softer than enamel which has a uh, lower content of mineral salts mm, which renders it more radiolucent than enamel okay radiolucent it appears more blacker okay radio opaque means more whiter in radiography so it appears more radiolucent than enamel because of the lower content of mineral salt now uh, it is a chemical composition which has 70 percentage of inorganic content whereas in enamel it was 96 percentage and the 20 percentage is organic matter and the remaining 10 percentage is water in organic substance it has basically type 1 collagenous fibers and a minor amount of type 5 collagenous fibers non collagenous proteins includes dentine phosphoproteins dentine matrix protein dentine siloprotein bone siloprotein osteopontin osteocalcin etc and other proteoglycans phospholipids and some of the growth factors inorganic substance basically calcium hydroxy apatite crystals so type 1 collagen is a principal type of collagen found in dentine and inorganic crystals are plate shaped and are much similar than hydroxy apatite crystals in enamel and dentine also contains small amounts of phosphates carbonates and sulfonates okay now we are moving on to the innovation part so this is the part of dentine which has no endings so nerve fibers were shown to accompany 30 to 70 percentage of the odontoblastic processes and these are referred to as intratubular nerves so it has intratubular nerves so which uh, carries the sensation okay so intratubular nerves so these nerves and the terminals are found in close association with odontoblast process within the tubule so we have various theories of pain transmission through dentine so this is the theories of pain transmission the first one is direct neural stimulation transduction theory modulation theory gate control or vibration theory and hydrodynamic theory so let's see one by one the first one is direct neural stimulation this is according to which nerves in the dentine get stimulated but the main drawbacks is the nerves in dentine tubules are not commonly seen and even if they are present they do not extend beyond the inner dentine so topical application of local anesthetic agents do not abolish sensitivity hence this theory is not accepted okay so mm, the direct neural stimulation is not uh, well accepted theory as per the as per this theory they says the nerves are present on the dentine so if if it is present on the dentine uh, that topical application of local anesthetic agents should abolish sensitivity but it is not happening so it is not well accepted next one is transduction theory which is the odontoblast process is the primary structure excited by the stimulus this is the odontoblastic process and that the impulse is transmitted to the nerve endings in inner dentine okay 
So drawbacks is the non-neurotransmitter vesicles in the odontoblast process to facilitate the synapse or synaptic specialization. So according to transduction theory, there is no uh, presence of any type of neurotransmitter vesicles in the odontoblast. So that theory also not well accepted. Now we have the third theory that is modulation theory. So according to which now impulses in the pulp are modulated through the liberation of polypeptides from the odontoblast when injury or something happens. So these substances may selectively alter the permeability of odontoblastic cell membrane through hyperpolarization so that the pulp neurons are more prone to discharge upon receipt of subsequent stimuli that is a modulation theory when it gets modulated okay uh, that is also not well accepted the next one is gate control or vibration theory this theory states that the pain is a function of balance between information traveling into the spinal cord through large nerve fiber and information traveling through small nerve fiber so large nerve fiber carry non nociceptive information and small fibers carries nociceptive information okay that is a gate control or vibration theory it is between the large and small nerve fibers so according to this theory a beta fibers which transmit information from vibration receptors which stimulate inhibitory neurons in the spinal cord which in turn act to reduce the amount of pain signal transmitted from A delta and C fibers across the midline of spinal cord and from there to brain that is a gate control vibration it is basically the types of fibers it is highlighting A beta A delta and C fibers so whereas the modulation is different one modulation is the permeability change in autodomblastic cell membrane by hyperpolarization transduction is different one it is uh, an odontoblast process which is excited by the stimulus and the last one which is the most accepted theory which is the hydrodynamic theory so various stimuli such as heat cold air blast or mechanical or osmotic pressure which affects the fluid movements in the dentinal tubules okay so hydrodynamics so hydro means water dynamics is change so the fluid movements is the uh, most accepted concept of uh, pain transmission so this is a fluid movement either inward or outward stimulate the pain mechanism in the tubules by mechanical disturbance of the nerve closely associated with odontoblast and its process so it is all about movement of the fluid inward and outward the orendoblastic process so these endings may act as a mechanoreceptors as they are affected by mechanical displacement of tubular fluid so this is all highlighting about the movement of fluid and it is the most accepted one okay so uh, age and functional changes we are moving to the last part which is age and functional changes so the vitality of dentine uh, due to physiological and pathological stimuli there will be uh, always a change in vitality of dentine and secondary dentine will be continuously uh, deposited um, in the pulpal layer as the dentine is removed so removed by the changes and such as uh, dental caries abrasion attrition and such process there will be uh, formation of um, structures like dead tracts sclerosis and uh, in addition to the uh, secondary dentine or reparative dentine okay so uh, reparative dentine we already seen in uh, our session two now let's see what is dead tracts so dead tracts is nothing but odontoblastic processes which disintegrate and empty tubules are filled with air so it disintegrates and it fills with air okay so the, it looks like uh, black um, or dead tracts which is very black in color when transmitted light and white in reflected light okay so dead tracts appear as black in transmitted light and white in 
reflected light. So this degeneration is often observed in areas of narrow pulp horn because of crowding of photoendoplast. And these empty areas demonstrate decreased sensitivity. And detracts are probably the initial step in the formation of sclerotic dentin. Okay, so this is the tract which is giving sclerotic or transparent dentin. The sclerotic or transparent dentin when caries, attrition, abrasion, erosion or cavity preparation causes collagen fibers and appetite crystals to begin appear in the dentinal tubules. So this blocking of tubules may be considered as a defensive reaction of dentin. So these appetite crystals are initially only sporadic in dentinal tubule but gradually fill it with a fine meshwork of crystals. So that is transparent dentin. So as this continues, the tubule lumen is obliterated with minerals which appears very much like peritubular dentin. It looks like peritubular dentin. So the refractive indices of dentin in such areas become transparent and transparent in transmitted and dark in reflected light. So there is decreased permeability of dentin. Okay, so that is why these uh, caries, attrition, abrasion, in such cases, the collagen fibers and uh, appetite crystals to begin appear in the dentinal tubules. So the den dentinal tubules will be blocked and the refractive index of this uh, dentin will be similar as the adjacent uh, peritubular dentin and uh, it will look like transparent and uh, and transmitted and dark and reflected light so the last one is affected and infected dentin so the infected dentin is that part of dentin which is contaminated and contains microorganisms and the toxins and demineralized dentin whereas the affected dentin is not occupied by microorganism it just contains the toxins produced by microorganism of infected dentin and also there is demineralization okay so the collagen fibers are denatured de uh, natured in infected dentin while in affected dentin the collagen fibers demonstrated cross banding and is physiologically remineralizable so that's all about dentin we have finished uh, dentin mm. so we have finished in three sessions the first one part was the basic dentin uh, formation and the second part was various structures and the third part we mainly focused on the theories of innovation okay so the lots of questions will be asked lots of short notes we have seen primary dentine secondary dentine tertiary dentine uh, then the one abnus uh, lines then uh, we have dead tracks sclerotic or transparent dentine uh, oven lines of oven and the mandel dentin, circumpalpal dentin, peritubular, intertubular, interglobular dentin, pre-dentin. So everything might be asked as short note. So I'll come up with pulp in my next uh, session. Thank you.